Hi everyone and welcome to this series of short videos where I've been highlighting some of the key features of Azure Virtual Desktop. My name is Nigel Mullings and I'm the Lead Cloud Solution Architect for Ingram Micro Cloud in the UK. And as you can see, my main focus is Microsoft's Public Cloud, Microsoft Azure. I recently presented a webinar on Azure Virtual Desktop which is actually being replayed on June 15th at 10 o'clock, so I'll share a link to register if you missed it. And as it's such a hot topic at the moment, I thought it would be a good idea to demonstrate some of the key features of the service and how you can make significant cost savings and secure your deployment utilizing those features. Today, I'll show you how to use Azure Active Directory multi-factor authentication to secure your users. In this short video, I'll give you a quick overview of multi-factor authentication in Azure Virtual Desktop using the free tier of Azure Active Directory. In order to save costs, a lot of our partners take advantage of the free tier of Azure Active Directory for their customers. In this third Azure Virtual Desktop feature video, I'll show you how you can use multi-factor authentication in Azure Virtual Desktop to add an additional layer of security to your cloud infrastructure and secure your user's identity. Let's take a look at how to use multi-factor authentication in Azure Virtual Desktop if you have the free tier of Azure Active Directory. I'll give you an overview of the pricing for Azure Active Directory and look at the available versions of Azure Active Directory multi-factor authentication and the feature comparison based on licenses. I'll also highlight the multi-factor authentication for Azure Virtual Desktop documentation that talks about using conditional access policies to enable MFA, which is the recommended method. I'll then run through the security defaults and the per user MFA before demoing the features in action. Azure Active Directory comes in four editions. There are two free editions and a premium one or P1 at £4.50 per user per month and a premium two or P2, which is £6.80 per user per month. And as I mentioned, a lot of our partners are using the free tier for their customers. As you can see from the free tiers, multi-factor authentication is partially included, which essentially means enabled with limitations. So let's take a quick look at the documentation before I jump into a demo. Okay, so I'll quickly run through the documentation for Azure Active Directory multi-factor authentication. Um, as I'll share the links with you at the end of the video. So looking at the available versions for MFA, you can see here at the bottom, Azure Active Directory free. If you are a user of Office 365 free or Azure Active Directory free, um, you can use security defaults to prompt users for MFA. You don't have granular control of enabled users or scenarios, but it does provide that additional security step. And the same is true for users that are Azure Active Directory global administrators. So if you don't want to enable it for everybody, you can just make sure that your, um, your administrator accounts are protected also using MFA. If you look at the feature comparisons, you can see here Azure Active Directory free uses security defaults, which is MFA enabled for all users. So you'll be able to protect Azure Active Directory tenant admin accounts with MFA with free, and you can use a mobile app as a second factor of authentication. And the same is true for Azure AD free for global administrators, but you get the additional capability of using a phone call as your second factor or a text message. And you also have admin control over verification methods. And with global administrators, you also get to remember MFA for trusted devices. So just scroll down, look at the authentication policies, MFA policies, you'll see that security defaults policy allows, or it gives you a standard set of security rules to keep your company safe. And I'll show you those, what they, what they look like. Um, you can turn it off with a click of a button. Um, it's included in Office 365 licensing, and there are pre-configured templates in the 365 Admin Center. You can authenticate using the Authenticator app and software tokens. It blocks legacy authentication protocols, 
and new employees are automatically selected with security defaults. You can also use per user MFA, which will also give you a quick overview of. Uh, scrolling down, Azure AD free tier, all users in Azure AD free tenant can use Azure Active Directory multi-factor authentication by using security defaults. Mobile authentication app is the only method that can be used for Azure Active Directory multi-factor authentication when using Azure AD free security defaults. And you'll see that it does mention that the recommended approach to enforce MFA is using conditional access. But as we know, that's a paid feature and some, as I mentioned, a lot of our partners don't use the um, paid features, P1 and P2, and they're maybe not cost effective or they just have the free tier and still want to be able to use multi-factor authentication. So if I have a look at enabling Azure multi-factor authentication for Azure Virtual Desktop real quick, uh, just scrolling down to same um, concept, it's MFA just for a service inside Azure, so protecting that identity. And you'll see the prereqs, it says assign a user license that includes Active Directory P1 or P2 using a conditional access policy, which is outside of the scope of this video as we're talking about using MFA using the free tier of Azure Active Directory, which takes advantage of the security defaults in Azure Active Directory. So Azure and Microsoft are making security defaults available to everyone because managing security can be difficult. Identity related attacks like password spray, replay and phishing are common in today's environment. And more than 99.9% .9 of these identity related attacks are stopped using multi-factor authentication and blocking legacy authentication. And the goal is to ensure that all organizations have at least a basic level of security enabled at no extra cost. So with that, the security defaults are implemented, which require all users to register for Azure Active Directory, MFA, administrators to do the same, requiring users to do MFA when necessary, blocking legacy apps and protecting privileged activities like access to the portal. So the same MFA is logging into the portal, using services, essentially protecting that identity, the user identity. It could be that some companies don't want to enable MFA for all users. And if that's the case, you can also, with the free tier, enable per user Azure Active Directory multi-factor authentication. And we'll have a quick look at that as well um, in action in Azure. Okay, so here I am logged into Azure. And as you can see, I've got my Azure Active Directory tenant and Azure Virtual Desktop pinned to my dashboard. Azure Virtual Desktop has a couple of host pools that one of my users has access to. Everything that's in both of these host pools. If I look at my Azure Active Directory tenant, you'll notice that I'm using the free tier and I'm not currently taking advantage of security defaults. I'm not using MFA in this environment. Security defaults which are part of the free tier or under the properties of your Azure Active Directory. So if you go into properties, you'll see manage security defaults at the bottom here. And you can turn that on with a single click. And as I mentioned, I don't currently have that enabled. And what that means is when my users log into Azure Virtual Desktop using the desktop client or any method for that matter, desktop client or the web browser, they won't be prompted for multi-factor authentication. So this is user one logging in using the desktop client without MFA. And straight away, without any further prompts, just using his username and password, he is available. You can see all the resources that are made available to him. <clears throat> if I log out with this same user, and then go back into my tenant and enable security defaults, which again is under the properties. And turn on security defaults and save that. I get a message telling me it's saved. And now if I go to log back in again with the same user, you should be prompted for multi-factor authentication. So let's have a look. Uh, 
So most of I can see I'm being prompted to approve a sign-in request on the Authenticator app on my mobile phone. So I'll just approve that. And that adds that extra layer of security before my user is allowed to see what resources have been made available to him. So as I mentioned in the slides, it could be the case that you don't want to enable security defaults across the board for whatever reason. When you disable security defaults, it'll ask you why. And if you remember the default method or the recommended best practice is to use conditional access. So let's assume that I'm using conditional access or I'm just not using security defaults. So that's been saved, but now I want to take advantage of per user MFA. So if I select per user MFA, it'll take me off to another browser. You can see my list of users and I can enable MFA per user by selecting the user, clicking and enable and enable multi-factor authentication. So now I can see this is the only user that's enabled for. I come out of there. I don't have security defaults enabled in my environment. So just double check. Okay, and now when my user logs in, he should still be asked for MFA because he's now using per user multi-factor authentication. And again, as you can see, being prompted to authenticate on the Authenticator app, which is the only method for the free tier to, for the second factor authentication. And again, as soon as that's been approved, the user then sees what resources are available to him. And the same is true using um, a browser in the portal. Let's say I wanted to send to Azure as that user. Now MFA is enabled. If I go to login to Azure, I'll get some experience asking me to authenticate using MFA. So if I just try to log into Azure as the same user, passwords in, and again, the authenticator asking to approve authentication. So you can see that this is a simple way, two methods to enable multi-factor authentication either using security defaults or per user MFA in your Azure Active Directory free tenant. So that was enabling multi-factor authentication using security defaults or per user MFA in Azure Active Directory. I hope you found that useful and you're now all rushing off to enable security defaults. As promised, these are the links to all the items we discussed and there should be a registration link to my AVD webinar included at the end of this video. Thanks everyone for taking the time out today and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Please feel free to reach out, contact me with any questions you have around MFA, Azure Virtual Desktop or Azure in general and I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks again, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day.